You might not have known that Magnetic North is not the same as True North. And Magnetic North is always changing over time. Currently, it's drifting away from northern Canada and towards Siberia. The Magnetic North Pole is where your compass needle points. So depending on where and when you are on Earth, the difference in angle between your needle and the direction of True North will change. This is why topographic maps give you a magnetic declination. It's the angle between Magnetic North and True North for the region covered by your map at a specific time. Since it's changing over time, it's best to look up the most recent declination reading online for the area before heading out. The National Centers for Environmental Information have a magnetic declination lookup available on their website. You need to account for magnetic declination when relying on a map and compass. A quality compass will have adjustable declination, so you can set it and forget it. A good compass is completely worth the investment, but if you don't have one with adjustable declination, you can still calculate it, and we'll show you how later on. First, let's look at using a compass with adjustable declination. Let's suppose we're on the central coast of California. Our USGS topo map tells us the declination is 13 degrees and 8 minutes east. However, this reading was in 2017, so we'll look this up for a slightly more up-to-date reading. We see that the latest model gives the declination as 12 degrees and 44 minutes east. Now is also a good time to mention the concept of grid north. Some maps use what's called a projected coordinate system, which is a grid reference system created on a particular map projection. The Earth is a three-dimensional object, so any two-dimensional map uses a projection which inherently introduces spatial distortion. It's convenient to use a coordinate system created within this two-dimensional projection because it can use a constant distance relationship between grid lines anywhere on the map. In the Universal Transverse Mercator coordinate system, each grid line is a kilometer apart. This is in contrast to a three-dimensional coordinate system like latitude and longitude, which is based on degrees, and a degree represents a different distance depending on where you are on the globe. 10 degrees of longitude at the equator is much wider than 10 degrees of longitude in the Arctic Circle. All the details of spherical geometry can get quite complex, but all you really need to know about grid north for navigation is that you'll want to include the adjustment for grid north along with your declination adjustment. We want our compass to read zero degrees on grid north, so any bearing you measure using your maps grid will translate into a proper reading on your compass, and vice versa. Back to setting the declination on our compass. We found that the declination is 12 degrees and 44 minutes east, and our grid north is 42 minutes east. Since we want our compass to have zero degrees pointing to grid north, we want to use the angle between magnetic north and grid north for our declination setting. So in this case, we subtract the grid north angle from our declination, giving us 12 degrees and two minutes east. And we'll just call it 12 degrees since the margin of error on the magnetic north reading is plus or minus 21 minutes. So now we can insert the key on our lanyard into our declination screw and rotate the screw until the declination is set to 12 degrees east. Now we can take bearings with our compass in this central California coast area and they'll be calibrated to our topo maps grid lines. Now let's suppose our compass does not have adjustable declination. In that case, we'll need to do a bit of arithmetic. When taking a bearing on our compass, we need to add the declination to our bearing if the declination is west and subtract the declination if our bearing is east before we translate it to the map. We need to reverse this when following a bearing that we measured from our map. We subtract the declination from the bearing we measured when the declination is west before entering it into our compass, and add the declination to the bearing when the declination is east. Although these are just simple addition and subtraction operations, it's easy to confuse them in the field, and it could have dire consequences if you get it wrong. So if you really don't want to buy an adjustable declination compass, you can consider adding a piece of painter's tape or masking tape onto your compass housing, effectively giving you a new orienting arrow to use. Ideally, you'd place this arrow on the back of the housing, but on this compass, the back doesn't rotate with the housing, so we need to place it on the front. Now we'll use the tape as the new orienting arrow for aligning our compass needle. To recap, Magnetic North is not exactly at the North Pole, and it's always shifting. Refer to your map's declination or look it up online if you're using an older map. Always account for declination in the wilderness, and remember to compensate for grid north on your map for more precise results. And just buy an adjustable declination compass. 
it's worth it if you're going to be doing any serious wilderness travel. Subscribe for more outdoor content and give this video a like if it was helpful.